Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 6 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 26. Go on and fool me. Scene, Yusaka Castle, Backyard Garden. A sound of heavy footsteps surround the backyard as we now see a multitude of people. They were all wearing fox masks while sporting traditional Japanese attire. Each of them held a large spear and were standing at attention while waiting for orders. Issei released his kiss with Ophis and looked around him, seeing that he and the three women were now surrounded by temple guards. Lady Yasaka, one of the guards spoke up. We heard a commotion and noticed the change in the color of the sky, so we came. Is everything all right, Lady Yasaka? The head guard now bows in respect. Yasaka meanwhile folds her arms with a frown. Yes, Captain, everything is fine I suppose. Kuroka giggles with an arm over her mouth. Issei, realizing that he has his hands on Ophis's hips, releases them in a panic. Looking toward Yusaka, Issei noticed a strange aura as the Fox Queen turned her gaze back to the boy while changing her frown into an obviously forced smile. Yeah, Yusaka-sama, the Fox Queen walks up toward Ophis and Issei while slowly nodding. You look a little, um, upset. Yusaka continued to slowly nod as she maintained her forced smile. Now within inches of Issei, Yusaka simply grabs onto Issei's shirt while pulling him away from Ophis and toward her. Before Issei could respond, nine fox tails, golden and large, now wrap themselves around the boy in a merciless sort of fashion. Even Issei's head was engulfed in these tails. Literally, nothing of the boy's body was visible. Mumbling through the tails, Issei's body was now being hugged with both of Yusaka's arms as she scowled at Ophis. That was supposed to be mine. You took his first kiss. Ophis tilts her head as her stoic face now sports a small grin. Correction. Fox, Issei kissed me. Ophis now touches her own lips with her index finger and blushes. This enrages the fox even more as Issei can feel the strength of those very soft tails, tightening. Kuroka then walks up to the scene and pokes at Issei with her finger with a grin. Hey, Dragon Kun, I'll get you out of there, you can count on me. Ophis and Yusaka look toward Kuroka and gain looks of confusion. The large mass of golden tails start to shake a bit as a mumbling could be heard. MMMMPH really? MMMPH. Kuroka nods, oh yes, I sure can. But, you have to do something for me. It's only fair, right? The tails move again, MMMPH, K. Nodding once again, the Nako declares, kittens. I want kittens, red dragon coon. Yusaka rolls her eyes, Ophis repeats the word, kittens. Yusaka's tail doesn't move, the guards all gain stress marks on their heads as they begin to march away, silently. Scene, Issei's living room. I see. Thank you for sharing, Mr. and Ms. Hyodo. Now I think it's time that you both rest a bit and remember nothing from this day. Valley Lucifer's eyes were glowing red as he relayed his magical influence upon the parents of Issei. Moments after, both parents stand and walk in a zombie-like state toward their bedroom and close the door. Thank you, Valley. Azazel stands from the couch and begins to pace the room. Moving forward, we know a few things at this point. First, Issei is allowed to communicate with his parents which means he has limited access to the outside world. Second, according to Mr. and Ms. Hyodo, Issei looked to be in good spirits. This suggests that he is not being tortured however, this could also serve as some sort of reinforcement, as in, perhaps the culprit or culprits, responsible for kidnapping Issei, allowed him to talk with his parents, simply as a warning that if he does not comply with their demands, his parents might suffer the consequences. But that is just speculation at this point in time. Third, we were not able to pick up even the slightest residual residue that would suggest Issei was actually and physically here, at any point since the event of his disappearance. Akino replies, so, you're saying that somebody was able to create some sort of communication with the Hyodos, kind of like a hologram or something to that effect. Azazel nods, and I know of only a handful of creatures that could create something like that. I won't mention names, but I have my suspicions all right, Akino nods, if you know something, erm, sensei, please, do something. Azazel stops pacing and looks down at Akino. Yeah, in fact, I gotta go, I want to look into something. The rest of you, stay here for now. Penemu nods as well as Riser. Scene, Yusaka's bedroom, 
Yusaka Castle. Issei, you are such a naughty boy. You must suffer the fate of 100 kisses. This will be your punishment for kissing the Ouroboros dragon. We can now see Issei as he has his entire body still covered in golden fox tails. His head however is now exposed. Yusaka is on top of Issei as he lays on his back on the large mat style bed. Issei attempts to turn his head left and right, to dodge incoming and very sensual kiss attacks. Yusaka meanwhile has a crescent shaped smile and a warm blush to go alongside it. Kisu kisu kisu, Issei finally gives in and the kisses become long and very enjoyable. In between kisses, the fox queen speaks softly. Era, era, Issei, good boy, my good little fox, kisu kisu. Chapter 27, Monster, Scene, Gregory. In a large library, we can see Azazel. He is sitting at a desk while looking through multiple and old looking books. The largest book of the bunch was bound in brown leather and had what looked to be a Japanese nine-tailed fox animal standing over a river. This was posted on the front cover while the spine showed a Celtic style not using multiple fox tails in gold. Azazel was looking through this every book, only to facepalm himself. No way. Why would she have anything to do with this? Azazel puts the book down while massaging his temples. Well, it would explain the mom and dad visit. Though I should retract some of my recent theories. Only way to know is to ask, I suppose. Azazel then facepalms again, and why am I talking to myself? Deciding that now was the time, Azazel then summons a communication circle. Azazel smirks, well, at least I know you aren't hurt, kid. Scene, Yusaka's bedroom, era, era, that is 98. Issei has a beet red face with a smile that could only suggest nervousness and arousal, both at the same time. Yusaka on the other hand, she had the same expression as earlier. A half crescent smile with warm eyes that saw nothing but the boy that was wrapped in her many tails, Yusaka then lifts Issei in for another kiss as she puckers. Issei is about to close his eyes again, that was until a noise, a very loud noise interrupted the moment. Ring a ding 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 ding. I said, a ring a ding 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 ding, an orange circle which had the sigil of the Gregory appeared next to the head of Kuroka. Instantly, the woman pulled back and looked incredibly embarrassed. Issei tilted his head while looking at the pulsing orange circle. So, you can customize the notification sounds on those things. Who knew? Issei then shrugged his shoulders which felt really nice against the soft fur that enveloped his body. Smiling, Issei looks up at Yusaka, you're good cool tone, Yusaka-san. Yusaka gains a nervous smile and nods. Well, I suppose I should answer that, so please, say nothing. That is unless, Yusaka moves a tail close toward Issei's mouth. Issei nodded very fast as he got the point. Era, era, good little fox. Yusaka now looks at the circle and it stops ringing. Is this Lady Yusaka of Kyoto? The fox queen responds, yes, governor. It is I. What can I say is the reason for your call? The orange circle pulses. With all due respect, Lady Yusaka, I know. Yusaka shudders but maintains her composure. That is quite the bold statement, Azazel Sama. And why, may I ask, would you assume I would have anything to do with Issei's disappearance? The orange circle pulses while Issei wishes he had his hands free so he could facepalm himself. Erm, Lady Yusaka, I never said anything about Issei. Well, not yet, you just jumped the gun, ma'am. Yusaka's jaw is agape. Issei then manages to shake himself free of the distracted Yusaka tails. As he sits back up, he puts an arm on the blonde woman's shoulder as she looks back at Issei with wide eyes. Issei smiles and mouths the words, it's okay, he can be trusted. Yusaka nods and mouths, I'm sorry. Issei uses his free hand to touch the cheek of the yukai. Yusaka enjoys the touch and blushes. The orange circle pulses once again. Hey, fox lady, do you hear me? We need to talk, now. Also, I want to speak with Issei right this very minute, otherwise I will go straight to Sirzex and Michael. Issei then screams back into the circle. Sensei, chill out, give me a minute, would ya? The orange circle stops pulsing. Issei nods and looks back at a blushing and smiling Yusaka. You still need to finish here. Urn, Kisu, Punishment. After this, I think you said 98. The Fox Queen gains a very excited smile and nods. The longer you make me wait, well, let's just say that I will add to your well-deserved, punishment, era era. 
Issei is totally turned on by those seductive golden eyes, but realizes he might have a problem if he doesn't act soon. Azazel Sensei. It's me and I am okay. I saw the news and no, I have not been kidnapped. I have a lot to tell you. Hell, you probably won't even believe me. I wouldn't believe me, not after what happened. Yasaka sits upward and softly places Issei against her chest as she rubs the top of his head, over his bandages. The orange circle pulses. Issei. I know, we all know. Issei shudders. What is it, that you, know? Issei assumed that Rias told them a story of him being the bad guy in all of this. Issei. We know what Rias did to you. We know she hurt you. Damn near killed you. You always beat the odds in almost everything, that's why I knew, even when you purged your evil pieces, I knew that you would survive. The voice on the other side of the circle sounded flustered, as if trying not to break down. The moment I came to the conclusion that you were with Yasaka, a weight lifted from my heart. Issei. I thought the worst, I thought you were taken away, somewhere like the void or worse. Many thoughts of you being tortured or manipulated into serving some evil pantheon, well, let's just say I haven't been sleeping well. That goes for a good deal of many people aside from myself, Issei. Issei begins to sob as Yusaka tightens her hold. I'm, SS, sorry sensei, I R, really am. But, Rias, Azazel, Rias is fucking evil. She is fucking evil, she smiled at me, sensei. She smiled when she shot that fucking blast at my HHH head. The circle pulsed. Believe me, we had no idea, I had no idea. Nobody did, she had all of us fooled. Issei spits out a few sentences as he is almost inconsolable at this point. She let me die, did you know that? Scene, Grigori. Tears are in his eyes as he stares blankly at the communication circle in front of him. Azazel flares his powers as he responds. What do you mean, Issei, through the circle, replies. When, when, when Arainer killed me. Rias, she practically planned it out. She had hair familiar hand me a flyer. It was a summoning circle. Oh damn, erm, so, I have that with me, shortly after, I erm, die, well, it suddenly teleports my savior. Perfect timing, right, Azazel nods while gritting his teeth. Go ahead, continue. I am sure that's not everything. The orange circle remains still for a moment, then it pulses again. The next day, I had no idea what had happened. I was left alone, for the entire day. RRR Rainier, Erm, I mean, Rias, she enjoyed watching me squirm around like a worm. She waited until I was yet again attacked by another angel, Donesik. Only then and only then, did she step in and actually do something. Don't you see? She planned everything. I was nothing but amusement for her sociopathic ass. Azazel flares his power once again but slowly sits back down on his chair while holding his fist against his teeth. Chapter 28. Perverted Angel. Scene, Grigori. Issei. I'm coming over. Is that all right? The orange circle remains silent for a moment, but shortly after, begins to pulse. The voice coming from the communication was Yusaka this time as the background sounded like somebody was crying. Governor Azazel, I will allow you into my domain. I will do this only and only if you swear to me, that you will say nothing of this entire ordeal involving my precious, erm, involving the Red Dragon Emperor, to anyone for any reason. Do we have an agreement? Azazel stares at the circle while growing a smirk. Interesting, most interesting. Sure, you have my word, ruler of Kyoto. A golden circle appears beneath the chair that Azazel is sitting in. This circle has a pair of fox tails as the outline, along with an intricate design that shows a plethora of alchemic and Japanese symbols. Azazel looks below him as a sweat drop falls from his forehead. Hey, wait a damned minute. I never said I was ready. Hey, are you listening? Flash. Scene, Yasaka's bedroom, Kyoto, Japan. Issei is instantly startled by a crashing sound. Yasaka meanwhile, has an arm over her mouth as she laughs. Foo 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 foo. We look at the scene play out. From the ceiling of the bedroom, a large and golden transportation circle manifested itself. Falling from said circle was no other than Azazel, who was still sitting on his library chair. To make it even more comical, Yusaka's bedroom had large ceilings, about 12 feet from the floor. This made the fallen angel collapse on his chair as it broke into pieces from the impact. 
Issei turns his head from Yusaka's chest and looks toward the floor. Azazel is now standing up while brushing the debris from the destroyed chair off of his yukata. Ha, ha, very funny, Yakasa sama. The fox queen pulls Issei back into her chest as she begins to laugh with a sleeve over her mouth. Fu 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 fu. Consider that payback, for threatening to tattle on my Issei. Fu 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 fu. Issei is managing to try and say something, however he is overpowered as Yusaka's tails rewrap themselves around the boy. Another problem presented itself as Yusaka continued to laugh hysterically. The fox queen's large assets were bouncing up and down in the boy's face, this continued until one of her breasts popped out from her kimono. Issei and Yusaka both noticed this immediately. As the laughing stopped, Issei's face was firmly placed against the exposed breast as a means of cover. Placing both of her hands on Issei's head with a blush, Yusaka then clears her throat. Well, Azazel-sama, should we move into a more appropriate setting in which we may discuss matters, in a civil manner? Finally feeling as though he had all of the dust removed from his outfit, the governor finally looks toward the couple on the bed and then his jaw drops. Seeing Issei struggling against one of Yusaka's best-known qualities, not to mention those soft-looking tails, all the fallen angel could think was, lucky bastard. Shaking off his momentary jealousy, Azazel nods. Yeah, sure thing, scene, Kyoto residence, what is taking him so long? Akino looks frustrated, Valley stands up while looking at Riser. They both nod at each other. Valley speaks up, I suppose I can brief you on our plans, at least until that crazy crow decides to come back. Akino nods and sits back down on the couch. So, about the, I can't believe I can say this with a straight face. Well, about the EHEM, Opai Dragon Hunt, we are going to be the team to find the security. I have my own reasons, as well as the rest of all of you, for finding Hyodo. We have all three biblical pantheons backing us, including their leaders. Though, we may have some competition. The only one I worry about, so far, is that crazy Yandere angel, Gabriel. Valley facepalms. I honestly can't figure that woman out. Really. She does things that would get any angel to fall, but she is a mystery, not to mention, relentless. Asia then speaks up, impossible, Gabriel Sama is a pure and powerful angel who only knows love and devotion. Riser then speaks up, you know nothing, little blonde nurse lady. Asia turns her gaze toward Riser as she puffs her cheeks out in anger. Riser knows many things, Riser has also seen the things that your angel carries on her. Questionable things. Asia tilts her head questionably. Riser places an index finger in the air as he continues his explanation. Riser had the opportunity to sneak into Gabriel's guest room back at the Grigori. Riser found things, all these things had Issei on it in one way or another. The entire ex peerage sits up straight as they are anticipating what Riser found. Nodding again, Riser continues. Riser found a weebish looking body pillow, shaped like Issei. That wasn't all. No, Riser also found posters and pictures, all of that little twerp. But do you want to know the most disturbing thing in all of this? Everyone in the room nods violently, aside from Valley and Penemu. Not a single one of those pictures looked as though Dragon Boy knew about them. You see, each picture looked as if it were taken from a faraway location, which means, Asia interrupts in a squeaking fashion. No fair, no fair. She told me they were for something else. Gabriel Sama told me that I had to take pictures of Issei without him knowing, it was for a present of some kind. So I figured she was just going to make him a nice pair of armor or something like that, but no, she, she, she's a pervert. Y-E-E-E-E-P. Riser and Valley both nod with smirks on their faces. With a blush and grin, Irina then speaks up. I must ask Gabriel Sama's secret for not falling. I want a Yandere too. The entire room looks at determined Irina with mixed emotions. Chapter 29. Meeting at Yusaka's. Scene, Yusaka's Castle, Kyoto, Japan. Please, make yourself comfortable, Governor. Yusaka is sitting at the head of a large and wooden table. Next to Yusaka, sitting on a chair that was pulled closely toward her, was Issei. He was wearing a wild yukata and had a look of embarrassment as Yusaka continued to play with Issei's hair. Sitting near the right of the pair was Kuroka as she looked to be filing her nails in a bored manner. 
Azazel finally sits down on a chair to the other end of the table while getting a good view of the Japanese-style meeting room. Azazel then speaks up. Well, you have a beautiful home, looks comfy, I can see why Issei wouldn't wanna leave this place. Azazel then turns his gaze to the revealing breasts that both the fox and Nako were sporting. Yeah, comfy, both women pick up on Azazel's meaning as well as where the fallen angel was looking at the moment. Then, as if both Yusaka and Kuroka were in sync, the ladies rolled their eyes at the same time. Then it hit her, where was the other person who should be here? Yusaka then looks up and around the room. She then takes a deep breath. Smelling the air, the fox queen smirks, I know you're here. Show yourself and sit down like the rest of us. Azazel looks puzzled. A voice suddenly replies. This startles the fallen angel as he now feels a very strong presence. Yes, I can do that. To Azazel, this voice sounded very familiar. However, it sounded deeper, more mature. The empty chair toward the left of Yusaka and Issei made a sound as if someone just sat down in it. Squish sound, moments afterwards, a black shadow materialized on said chair which radiated a single violet spark of energy. Flash. The shadow dissipates leaving a tall and pale woman, wearing a black lolita outfit. Azazel stands from his seat and points at the black-haired female. Ophis. You're a part of this too. Azazel looks the woman up and down in a speedy manner and then added one more comment. You got bigger. Ophis smiles and nods. My Issei is attracted to this form, to me, so I simply increase the age of my form, nothing more. Azazel nods slowly as he sits back down. Right. Um, Issei. Issei stands from his chair and looks at his sensei with a nervous smile. What's up, Azazel? The governor now places two fingers against his left temple as he rubs it slowly, feeling a headache coming on. Kid, I have so many questions, you have no idea. Issei chuckles nervously. Believe me, I am still trying to figure this out. Azazel then smiles. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. You are going to be harem king someday. Yasaka immediately scowls. Kuroka blushes. Ophis repeats the word, harem. Issei sees the looks and places one of his arms behind his head as he giggles nervously once again. Ophis then shakes off her current distraction and speaks up. Fallen angel, why are you here? Are you here in order to attempt to take my mate from me? Ophis's mood changed into one of a threatened wolf. The original smile she had turned upside down into gritting teeth. As she did this, the usual flat teeth that one would have, started to sharpen into canines. Each tooth looked very sharp as they grinded against each other. The Ouroboros dragon then stands as her eyes begin to change from the usual grey eyes, to now a violet glowing color, while having slits in place of round pupils. The aura of the room changed into something dark and dismal. Yasaka and Kuroka both reached over and grabbed Issei, pulling him in between both of the girls as they stood. Azazel, who was still sitting on his chair, looked deeply into the eyes of one of the most powerful creatures to have ever existed. However, instead of fear, Azazel was showing a smirk as he tapped on the table with his index finger. So, you love him. Ophis stopped flaring her power and looked blankly into the eyes of the fallen angel. Tilting her head, Ophis replies, was that a question? Azazel shakes his head no. Not a question, a fact. Clearly you have finally passed the threshold of emotion. I don't think anyone would believe what I am seeing right this very minute. The Ouroboros dragon in all of her glory, wanting something other than silence. Ha 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 ha. Ophis tilts her head the other way as her monstrous form starts to revert back to normal. Azazel then stands while pointing at a smothered Issei. Yasaka and Kuroka both have Issei in each arm as fox tails slowly work themselves around Issei's midsection. I keep telling everyone this, but nobody seems to get it. Issei. You always beat the odds. I don't know how you do it, but you do. It's just so very interesting, it really is. Issei simply smiles nervously. Azazel now starts to count on one of his hands while using his fingers. Yusaka. Yukai faction leader. That's one. Kuroka. Senjetsu master and SS class devil. That's two. Lastly, Ophis, the infinite dragon god. That's three. Hate to say it kid, but you got a good thing going. Scene, Sea Tree Mansion. Stop moping and attack me already. In a large training field, in the basement of the manor, we can see all of Sona's peerage, sparring in different groups. 
Genshiro Saji had his sacred gear, Vitra, summoned on his arm, however his stance was bad. Sloping shoulders accompanied a hunched figure as Saji looked like he wanted to be somewhere else. Momo Hanakai noticed this and stomped her foot down. Saji, what's wrong? The boy just shakes his head as his eyes are focused on his own shoes. The white-haired devil frowned. Come on, cheer up. If you do, I will take you out for a parfait. The depressed teen looked up toward Momo and nodded. Momo flexed and smiled, right, let's do it. Watching the scene from a distance, Sona Sitri is standing next to Subaki Shinra. Subaki speaks up, it's not just a matter of training, we also need to focus on our intelligence gathering methods. After all, this will be a game in which reason and deduction will be key. Sona nods as he maintains a stoic face. Don't worry about that, my queen, I have plans within plans. Sona then folds her arms and shows a slight smile. This will be one of the few times where I use my influence as a sea tree. I have favors that I can call on whenever I like. Perhaps now is a good time. Subaki looks down at Sona with her own version of stoicism. Can't be helped. After all, this is your opportunity to claim the Red Dragon Emperor, for yourself, now that Rias is out of the picture that is. Sona blushes. Chapter 30. Clear that air. Scene, Yasaka's castle, Kyoto, Japan. After a few minutes of pleasantries, Azazel then looks at Yasaka, Kuroka and Issei. He then focuses on the tails that are wrapped around Issei while nodding to himself. Deciding that he didn't want Issei in the room for what was to come next, Azazel spoke up. Say, Issei, the boy, who was currently starring at both Kuroka and Yasaka, stopped what he was doing and looked over toward the fallen angel. Sup, Sensei. Azazel looks around the room one more time, looking past Ophis, Yasaka and then Kuroka, now finally back toward Issei. When was the last time you stretched out? You know, train, I know you don't have the Grimori's evil pieces anymore, so maybe you should test your abilities a bit. I mean, it's been what, a few days now. If I were you, I'd go outside and see what you can do. Who knows, maybe you will discover new abilities. The drag spoke up while Issei's arm began to pulse with red and green light. That perverted angel is correct, partner. I would like to find out as well. Issei looks up at his arm and nods. Yeah, okay. Sounds like Sensei is at it again, wanting to experiment, I get it. Issei now looks up at Yusaka while shrugging his shoulders. The Fox Queen doesn't understand at first, but then she realizes that Issei wouldn't be able to train as he was accosted by the woman's nine appendages. Continuing to usual smile, Yusaka nods and slowly releases Issei. Azazel then speaks up. As far as the rest of you, there are some things I would like to talk about, that is, if you don't mind. Yusaka, Kuroka and Ophis all look at the angel and then at each other. Kuroka was the one to speak up, she did this while looking directly into Yusaka's eyes while nodding. Sure thing, Crow, might as well clear the room, as they say. Yusaka agrees with this but is hesitant to leave Issei on his own. The fox Yukai then claps her hand twice. Two guards open the sliding door and bow. You too, I want you to escort Issei-kun to the gardens. Also, inform Kunuo as I am sure she would love to spend time with her Opai dragon. That will be all. The guards nod and stand while waiting for Issei. The brown-haired teen now squints at Azazel, as if he is trying to figure the old fart out. Azazel-sensei, what is it that you don't want me knowing? The angel in question smirks. Ah, I wouldn't worry about anything, Dragon Emperor. It's just some boring political stuff, you know, the stuff that bores you to no end. Feeling that this was a solid statement, Issei then nods and starts to walk off toward the main door. He is abruptly stopped as both Kuroka, Yusaka and now, Ophis, all pull him into a deep hug, each girl taking their turn and then pulling the boy away for their personal time. This happens for a few minutes as the guards form sweat marks on their foreheads. Azazel's grin widens. Lucky bastard. Scene, heaven. In a large and elegant room, we can see white walls which were crowned in deep gold. Archways and pillars accompanied this room. Everything looked to be in place, including the marble statues, however, this all changes when we see what we are about to see. On those beautiful white walls with gold, we can see posters, shoddily taped to said walls. Some of these posters were draped over most of the marble pillars. On the gigantic white and canopy style bed, 
we also see what look to be human-shaped pillows, four of them to be precise. And just like the posters, these pillows had the same theme. Issei. As we try to wrap our minds around this insane scene, the large door opens. Walking through this door was a beautiful, blonde-haired woman. Her eyes were the bluest shade of blue. Six pairs of white wings are extended from her back. She wears a pair of white and gold armor which shows off her massive cleavage and bare thighs. The moment her door shuts, the armor falls to the floor making a loud clanking sound. The woman then runs toward her bed and tackles one of the Issei-shaped pillows and forces the head area in between her very large chesticles. Rolling around in her bed like a child, the angel declares a few things out loud and to herself. Issei, Issei, Issei. You love this don't you? Living in my room for all of eternity. Look, I even made this soft and velvet material that coats the shackles that hold you to my bed. Isn't that just romantic? You must praise me now. Oh Issei, you shouldn't say such things, era era. Oh my, don't get too excited, you might overexert yourself if you tug on those chains too much. Ha 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 ha. The scene pans out with Gabriel, playing with a pair of handcuffs and attaching them to her body pillow. Scene, Yasaka Castle, Meeting Room. Issei left the room moments ago. This left the three previous supernatural women and Azazel, all sitting in their chairs. Azazel speaks first, after he was sure that Issei was not within earshot. So, which one of you removed his pieces? If Issei did it, rather, the drag, his survival would have been almost non-existent. Which means, there was some intervention. Also Yasaka, I have a question for you specifically, after this one is answered. Feeling offended that the governor of the fallen angels would just call her by her name without any formality, the woman was about to say something. That was until she saw the very serious look in Azazel's eyes. Deciding to let this one slide, the fox queen relents. Very well, if you must know, I did. Kuroka then intervenes. Hey now, I helped too, you know. Azazel nods. You know, I was going to say that forcing Issei's pieces out was very stupid and irresensible. Well, I would say that in almost any situation, aside from this one. The fact that the kid had not only a powerful nine-tailed fox demon, but also a Nekomata SS class Senjutsu master, well, that was not stupid. In fact, from what I understand, Sirzex had her wife look into finding said Senjutsu master not moments after she found an unresponsive. Hyodo in one of his peerage members' arms. Ah, okay, this all makes sense now. Kuroka and Yasaka look at the fallen angel with questioning looks. Ophis, on the other hand, is blankly looking toward a wall, however her head moves as she focuses on something. Azazel notices this and assumes that the infinite dragon god was simply watching Issei, through the walls of the home, as the governor knew the teen should be training by now. Nodding to himself, Azazel returns his attention to Yasaka. All right, last question. Yasaka, does Issei know what you are doing to him? Yasaka's eyes widen. Kuroka looks confused. Ophis now pays attention and looks directly at the Fox Queen with her stoic eyes. Ophis speaks up. Answer Baka Zazel's question. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one god in my storage.